information in the periodic table, uh, is, it is possible to determine that the atoms of the elements aluminum Al, silicon Si, and phosphorus P are most similar in terms of length. So if we look at our periodic table, so if you all would have that open and available. Okay, if you notice that aluminum is in group 13, uh, silicone is in group uh, 14, and phosphorus is in group 15. So are the valence electrons the same? Yeah, no. No, because they're in the same row together. They're not in the same column. So are they most in common in terms of mass? Let's look at their mass. Uh, let's see. Aluminum has a mass of um, 26.9. Um, silicone has one in 28.0. It keeps going, but we'll go with that. And phosphorus has 30.9. Is their mass pretty close? Okay, how about hardness? Do you think their hardness would be the same? No. No, because we have them spanning from metal to non-metal. Okay. How about luster? No. No, metals are going to have a luster that's kind of shiny and reflective, and they're not all metals. The only metal is aluminum. And then corrosiveness, how they break down. Do you think that would be the same? No. no. Corrosiveness is a type of uh, reaction that occurs with other uh, substances around them, like oxygen and stuff. So that would be true if they were in the same uh, group together. So the real answer is going to be mass. They're close, closely related by mass. Okay. Number two. Which of these parts of an atom is the smallest? Okay. So here we have the nucleus with protons, neutrons, and electrons on the outside, right? Okay. What is the smallest portion of the subatomic particles? What's the smallest? What is it, Blaine? Um, the electrons are. If you remember, protons and neutrons are each one AMU. They're the same size. Yes? I answered A on the one. Oh, no, never mind. Sure. You okay? All right. And remember, the electrons are too small to measure. They're much, much smaller than one AMU. Uh, so we do not count them in their mass. And remember, the nucleus is where all the mass comes from. So when we were looking at mass in the previous question, this is what's in the nucleus of each of these atoms. We don't count the electron in their mass, okay? Okay, next question, number three. Which of these is the positive particle found in the nucleus of the atom? Well, what items are in the nucleus? Protons and neutrons. Which one of those is positive? Protons are. What's the charge of a nu uh, neutron? Neutral. They're none. They're neutral, right? No charge. So the proton is my answer. Any questions there? Have any questions on this one, guys? Y'all good? Number four. Which of the following best describes an atom? Okay, so lo looking at this atom. That's why I said, you know, using other parts of the test can help you identify things you're not sure of. So if we're looking at this atom, let me see if this makes sense. Protons and electrons group together in random patterns. Are they random? Do they look random? No. They have some sort of order to them. Protons and electrons group together in alternating patterns. Are the protons and electrons grouped together? Do you see them grouped together there? No. Okay, so F and G are out. Letter H. A core of protons and neutrons surrounded by electrons. Is that true? So H looks good. Let's look at J. A core of electrons and neutrons surrounded by protons. No. no. These are the protons and neutrons right here. And the electrons are orbiting the outside in the electron cloud. So H is your answer. Okay. Number five. Where are electrons found in an atom? So electrons, looking here again, they're inside the protons. No. Uh, deep within the nucleus. No. Orbiting the nucleus. D, uh, covering the surface of protons. No. Definitely C, they're orbiting the nucleus, okay? Okay, number six. Which of these makes up the mass of an atom? We just talked about that. So the mass is right here. Is it the neutrons and the electrons? 
Is it neutrons and electrons? No. Because no. electrons don't count for mass. Yeah. Protons and electrons. No. Electrons and energy levels. No. Protons and neutrons. Yes. yes. The protons and neutrons are the mass. Okay, they, they give us the AMUs. Each one is worth one AMU apiece. So protons are one AMU, uh, neutrons are one AMU. Okay, number seven. Talks about isotopes. What is an isotope? What's an isotope? Like an um, element that gives an atom or gets an atom? No. Not an atom, sorry. An uh, electron. Or no. An electron. That would be an ion. Peter? Gains a neutron. Okay, it's not really gaining or losing, it's just an unusual type that has extra or less, okay? So, just to clarify, because uh, Peter said it somewhat right, an atom that has extra or fewer neutrons, they can't gain them or lose them, they're just kind of unusual. You remember we talked about if someone had a twin and they had a mole, they'd be identical so that they have a mole, right? It's not like they lose that mole later, it stays with them for life, unless they get it surgically removed, I guess you could say. So. Um, it's not like they gain them or lose them, they just have extras or less than the more common one, okay? So we're talking about isotopes. It says isotopes like carbon-12 or carbon-14 are the atoms of the same element that contain different numbers of blank in their nucleus. Different numbers of atoms in their nucleus. Is that true? Can we have different numbers of atoms in a nucleus? Yeah. No. Seriously? Does that make sense? Are y'all thinking? Only one atom. Can we have more than one atom in a nucleus of an atom? I no. Oh, no. Okay, can we have more than one uh, numbers of electrons in the nucleus? Are the electrons in the nucleus? No. Oh, they're on the outside. Okay, C, neutrons in the nucleus. No. That, that's possible. Yeah. That's possible. Protons in the nucleus. I'm thinking, yeah, no, 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 no. no. It's no, neutrons. If you're listening to me just a minute ago, you know it's nuclear, or neutrons, okay? Yeah. Neutrons make up an isotope's differences, okay? When determining an element's identity, what is the most important subatomic particle to examine? So it's identity, okay? Are the electrons important? No. The valence ones are, right? Yeah. yeah. So that could be true. How about the neutrons? Not so much. How about the, uh, what is that? Neutrinos. No. Never heard of neutrinos. Protons. Yes. Okay, let's take a look at our periodic table. What does that atomic number always tell us? Protons. Protons. They never change. So to find its identity, the best thing is the protons. Now its reactivity would be electrons. So its identity would be the protons. Because the protons never change. They, they tell us the atomic number, okay? Okay, number nine. Okay, based on the section of the periodic table shown above, which statement best describes the element carbon? So carbon is right here. Okay, carbon is a metal with an atomic number of six. Is it a metal? No. No, because it's on the right side of the zigzag line, so that's out. Carbon is a metal with an atomic number of 12. The metal is still messing things up, plus the 12 messes us up. C, carbon is a non-metal with an atomic number of 6. Yes. That's true. Let's look at D. Carbon is a non-metal with an atomic number of 12. No. No, its mass is 12. So C is our answer. Okay, any questions there? Okay, number 10. An element's atomic number refers to what? So we're talking about these top numbers here. 8, 9, 2, 10, okay? The number of neutrons in its nucleus. No. How do we find neutrons? Y'all remember? That's right. We subtract our protons, which is our atomic number, from the atomic mass after we've rounded our atomic mass, okay? How about G, the number of other elements it will combine with? Possibly. The atomic number will tell us that? Oh, no, no. Okay, reread the question. H. H, the number of protons in its nucleus? Yes. 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 Let's look at J, the number of electrons it has? No. Um, that's true only if we're dealing with neutral atoms, atoms that have not reacted yet, okay? All right, so protons never change, remember? Okay, number 11. 
Okay, what element is represented in this model if the atomic number is 3? So we're dealing with 3. Okay, so look at our periodic table. All we had to do was look at 3. What do we got? Lithium. Lithium, Li. Now, I had a question come up, and, it said, and they asked me on the test when they were taking it, they said, well, there's a problem, Mr. Hayes, because the atomic number is 3, but it has 4 electrons. Okay, so what happened to that atom if it has 4 electrons? Do what? It's like, I think it's negatively charged. It is negatively charged. It gained an electron from somewhere else, didn't it? Okay. And so it's now negatively charged. It's an ion. So I almost thought the question was wrong, but I realized it told us the atomic number is 3. And it was just making you realize we can't always depend on the electrons to tell us that. Because this one went through a change. Okay. So it's an ion. But because it's atomic number three, we know it's lithium, okay? See any questions about that one? Y'all good? Okay, number 12. Which of these atoms has the most mass? So we had to find these in our periodic table. Okay, number F, letter F is indium. And I'm going to have to find that. It's 114.8. Uh, uh, hey, is uh -huh. I'm sorry? Is that some I'm not sure on that one. Okay, okay 10, his symbol is SN. And i got to find him real quick. If you say before me. 118.71. That's his mass. Okay, yeah, 118.7. We'll just put 118.7. Okay, then Euterium, which I told you all to look at 39 on that one. That's 88.9. And then we have Iodine which is 126.9. And it says, which of these has the most mass? What's our answer? Obviously, iodine. Iodine does. Okay, so you just had to look at those. Um, You're on the wrong page for it. Any oh. questions there? Yes, sir? It says that I got it wrong. Yeah, it says I got it wrong, too. What? Yeah, if you notice on the front of your page, I checked off and said it was correct. Oh, look okay. on your very front of your page. I give you all credit. Because there's two atoms that look about the same, and, and uh, I corrected y'all's because it was wrong. Actually, it was right. Okay, number 13. An electrically neutral atom consists of 15 neutrons. Okay, I want y'all to pay really close attention here. This one was kind of tricky. It has 15 neutrons, 13 electrons, and a number of protons. What is its atomic mass? Okay, um, it says it's electrically neutral. That's important. That means it has the same protons as neutrons. So, um, same protons as electrons. So it had 13 electrons, so it must also have 13 protons, which are positive. It told us it had 15 neutrons. Okay, when we add those together, what do we get? 28. Because remember, the mass is the protons and the neutrons. So if it's electrically neutral, the electrons and protons had to match up. Okay, any questions there? That was kind of a tricky one. You had to kind of think twice on that one to get it right. Everybody good? Okay, let's go to 14. Okay, 14. Which of the following list of elements... I'm sorry, it says, which of the following list, the elements in order, from those having the fewest protons to those having the greatest number of protons? So let's look at these. Um, N, um, P... AS, SB, and BI. Okay, does that go from the fewest to the greatest? This one does. Let's try a different color on this one. LI, um, BE, HE, uh oh, look where it went, 3, 4, 2. Is that going to work? Because it went to smaller after the four, so that one's out. Okay, let's go with um, CS, RB. Uh oh, went from 55 to 37, so that went wrong. Okay, then finally AT. Um, kind of hard to see this. Where's AT at? Oh, right over here. AT, 85. Um, then it went to I, 53. This one's going smaller also, so it's definitely F. Any questions there?
Okay. Okay, 15. The majority of the elements in the table belong to which group? Metals, right here, right? These are all metals? Okay. Any, anybody miss that one or have, have a problem with it? Unfortunately, you can use your color-coded periodic table on the test, right? I don't remember that. Okay, 16. Which of these atoms has the lowest mass? What are we looking for for mass? What's the mass of the atom? Where's it at? Protons. Protons and neutrons. So this one has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven AMU. This one has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight AMU. One, two, three, four, five, six AMU. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven AMU. Okay, so I said which of these has the lowest mass? H. Okay, any questions there? You missed it because you misread it? Yeah, I thought it was the most, not lowest. Okay. Yeah, me too. That happens sometimes, misreading a question. Okay, 17. Most of the volume of an uh, atom is made up by what? It's talking about volume. Empty space. Remember the distance from the nucleus, if this was the nucleus of an atom? Our first ring would be way over here, possibly. And so the space between there is empty. Okay? Okay, number 18. And we're talking about volume there. If it said the majority of the mass of the atom is made up by the, you'd say nucleus, but it's talking about volume. Number 18. If you break a glass container in the lab, you should what? Tell the teacher. Yeah, tell the teacher. Anytime we're dealing with an accident, always tell the teacher first, okay? Walk away. They'll wipe it up with the test. No. 19. A student drops a beaker on the floor, breaking it. Which of the flying should the student do first? The There's an accident again. Mind. Tell teacher. Very similar to the previous question. Number 20. You should use goggles when what? The teacher instructs you to do so, using chemicals, using an open flame, or all the above? All the above. All the above. Yeah, all those are great answers for using goggles. What if we chose G? Shouldn't we get that right? Uh, no, because it works for all of them. J had to be the right answer. Oh, okay. In every case, you would use them. Okay, 21. This is kind of a hard picture to see, uh, at least on the overhead it is. I think but it would be... Which one is the best way that you should hold a test tube over a Bunsen burner? You're heating it up, so you got a flame underneath. So you do not want to be touching the test tube. Which one is not touching it? C, C. They're using test tube tongs, if you remember those in our lab equipment. Okay, 22. 22. Which of these models of an atom represents a stable atom that will not react? Okay, if it's stable, what are we looking for in the atom? What's to, what tells us if, if an atom's stable? Patrick, what tells us if an atom's stable? Um, if the outer ring of the atom is full. Okay, so if the outer ring is full. Is this one full? Nope. No, because it's only got one sitting there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Is that one full? No. One, two, three, four, five. Is that full? No. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah. Yeah, so model D for J uh, 22. If the outer ring is full, it will not react. Okay? 23. Before I move on to 23, any questions on this one? No, sir. Okay. If it was helium, it'd only have two in the outer ring, right? And it'd only have one ring. So it would also be stable. Okay, which of the models of the atom represents a reactive metal? Okay, now we've got to figure out what they are. Okay? So we can look at the protons. Is three a metal? Is three a metal? No. Yeah, it is. It's in group one, right? So that's lithium. So that one's reactive. It's in group one. It's the most reactive. Let's look at B. Seven protons. It's nitrogen. Is it a metal? No, no metal. Okay, let's look at nine. Nine is fluorine. In group 17, is that a metal? No. Yeah, no. no, that's a non-metal. Okay, uh, ten protons. That is neon. Is that a metal? No. It's actually a gas or non-metal. The only one that works is this one here, model A. Any questions there? Oh, wow. Okay, that was a two-part question. You had to find the, the metal and if it was reactive. 
Okay. Yes. 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 On that one. Uh, I didn't, I, was no, I, I didn't know what I was doing, yeah. so I just kind of like, <laughs> went from what I thought I was supposed to be doing, and I got it wrong. So. You understand it now? Yeah. Okay. So the first thing you had to do was find out if it was a metal, on where it was located. And I did that by looking at the protons. Protons will tell me the atomic number. And there was only one metal in the whole group. And it was also in group one. If you remember, group one is very unstable, very reactive. Okay. Okay, number 24. When determining an element's chemical properties, the most important subatomic particle is to look at the what? Okay, protons. Is that true? Yes. It's chemical properties? No. Okay, we'll put a question mark because you're kind of, eh. Valence electrons? Yes. Yeah? Because that's going to tell you how they react chemically, is the electrons. Mm -hmm. Neutrons? Yeah. No, they don't have a charge. Uh, positrons. Uh, we never talked about those. Yeah, we never talked about those. Okay, which of the two of those do you think would be best when we're talking about chemical reactions? G. G. They're going to tell us how they react, right? Group 1 likes to react with group 17. Group 2 likes to react with group 16 because of their valence electrons and so on, okay? Which this next six weeks we'll be talking much more about uh, chemical behaviors, okay? Okay, 25. How many protons would an atom of magnesium have? Okay, here's magnesium. Okay, so magnesium is Mg. And it has uh, 12 here. And it has 24.305. And it's in group 2, period 2. Okay, how many protons would an atom of magnesium have? How many protons? 12. 12, that number right there. Okay. This number, remember, the 2 tells me how many valence electrons. This one tells me how many rings. This one tells me the nucleus, so if I want to find neutrons, I round this number, subtract that number, and I get neutrons, okay? Okay, 26. According to the periodic table, which of the following is the most accurate model of an atom of boron? So let's draw boron's uh, little square here. Boron has this going on. And 5 here. 10.81. Um, We've drawn boron a lot in this class. He's in group 13. That's what my he is in period uh, 2. So we're looking for two rings. One, two, one, two. One ring there, no. Uh, one ring here. We're down to these two already just because of this. Okay? Five protons. Hard for me to read on the screen, but let's see here. One, two, three, four, five. This one checks out for protons. One, two, three, four, five. So does this one. Okay, so the protons check out. Electrons should also be five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Those check out. Neutrons, um, 10.81. So 11 minus five. What do we have there? Six. six neutrons. Okay, so let's count our neutrons. One, two, three, four, five, six. This one checks out. One, two, three, four, five. This one does not check out. The answer is F. You had to finally get down to the neutrons to figure it out. Okay, any questions there? Okay, 27, next question. Okay, which of these groups in the periodic table is made from reactive metals? So which side are the metals on? Which side of the zigzag line? Okay, so these are metals. So is group one metal? Yes. Yes. yes, is group six? Except for hydrogen. Group six is. These two are not. Which one's the most reactive? The far left or the far right? Far left. Far left, so group one. Number 28. Which of these groups in the periodic table is made from non-reactive elements? Okay, which ones are not going to react? Group 18. Group 18. These guys here, what do we call them? Noble gases. Noble gases. They have a full set of what? Valence electrons. Valence electrons. electrons. Group 18 will not react with anything. Okay? 29. Okay, guys, pay attention, please. 29. Which of these groups or columns in the periodic table is made up primarily of elements that are gases at room temperature? 
Which ones are all gases? Group 18. Noble gases. Uh, again, group 18. Okay, 30. An atom consists of seven neutrons, seven electrons, uh, a number of protons, and a, chain, and a charge of negative one. So negative one charge. What is this mass number? Okay, all we need to know for the... Uh, for this is the seven neutrons that makes up the mass and the protons. How are we going to find the protons? Well, um, whenever you get like a, a negatively charged atom, you get one more electron, so you lose a proton. So wouldn't it have six protons? You were so close. You can't lose or gain protons. Remember, oh, they so never it change. Has seven protons? Okay. Well, first of all, it has um, seven neutrons, right? So it was, well, like, let me go back to it. Um, it has seven electrons, we know that, and it has a negative one charge, which meant it gained an electron, so that in reality it only had six to begin with. Okay? So it originally had six electrons. That meant it originally had six protons. So six plus seven. Okay? So 13. That was a little tricky. Okay? Y'all get that? First of all, we had to realize that it was negative 1, which means it gained an electron. So its original electrons was minus what we know now. So it was originally 6. So if it was originally 6 electrons, then it had to have 6 protons. We add that to the neutrons we now have, and that would be giving us that answer. Okay, okay next question. Which of the following scientists is famous for his work with atoms? Darwin, uh, Mendeleev, Rutherford or Hutton? Rutherford. Rutherford. Remember, he was he was responsible for not only the atomic theory, but also the history of the periodic table. So Rutherford. Mendeleev was only responsible for the periodic table. Okay? Number 32. The development of the periodic table has been most helpful to which field of science? Chemistry. Chemistry. In fact, we're working with chemistry this six weeks. In 1911, Ernest Rutherford carried out an experiment in which he fired radioactive particles through a thin gold foil. He found that most of the particles passed straight through. A very small number of particles, however, were de deflected. How did Rutherford's gold foil experiment contribute to the modern atomic theory? A. It suggested that atoms consist mostly of empty space. Possibly. Maybe. Yes. It confirmed the presence of neutrons in the nucleus. That's what no, I got. obviously not. Okay. I guess I was wrong. Were you all wrong there? Yeah, that's what I chose. I guess I chose two, but it's both. Okay, show that all matter is made up of small atoms. No, I didn't. I didn't. No, because some passed through, so I kind of showed there was spacing, right? It prevented the atoms uh, roughly, I'm sorry, proving that atoms is roughly a spherical shape. No, that was like Okay, so A is our answer. Okay, so mostly there's empty space The uh, because things were able to pass through a solid sheet of gold foil. Okay. 34. Dmitri Mendeleev studied the uh, chemical characteristics of elements in the 1800s. He discovered that elements could be arranged in the table according to patterns that occur in their characteristics. Which of these processes would be very difficult now without Mendeleev's discovery? Uh, Measuring the atomic mass of elements. Yes. Would that be tough? Yes. Could be. Predicting the reactivity of elements. No. We can predict them based on where they are on the table, right? That'd be pretty tough without it, so that, that could be a possibility. Identifying the color of elements. That's not too useful. Finding color of elements is not really what we're after with chemistry. Using the chemical symbols of elements. No. So we're down to F and G. So he discovered that elements could be arranged in the periodic table to patterns that occur in their characteristics. Which of these processes would be very difficult now without Mendeleev's discovery? Measuring the atomic mass or predicting the reactivity? It's G. Okay, we have a better idea of which ones are reactive and which are not based upon where they are located in the periodic table. Okay. 35. Niels Bohr was a scientist whose work in the early 1920s was accepted and used by future scientists. Which of the following discoveries is Bohr known for? Arranging the elements into seven groups by their similar properties. Is that something Bohr did? Y'all seem questioning on that. Okay, developing the model of an atom as built 
in successive um, orbital shells of electrons? Yes. Can you all say yes on that one? Being the first to uh, propose the concept of the atom, who was that one? The concept of the atom. Greek philosopher, Democritus. He's the first one that kind of conceptualized the idea. Discovering the nucleus of the atom. Okay, so which one do you think is best? B. B. All right, any questions, guys? Okay, who feels like they could have made a better grade? Yeah. Always seems easier when I go through it, right? Yeah. Okay, so if you still need help on this, if you want to go back through it again, uh, please review this on YouTube, and you're welcome to ask me questions on it, and I can go over it with you individually.